Like the song says, New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. The Bronx is up and the battery's down. But the Bronx is also known as the home of the Yankees, as well as the site of a gritty battle for urban renewal, which many believe destroyed its grandeur, resulting in images of the South Bronx that stuck in many people's minds during the 70s as the Bronx is burning. In his new book, Bitter Bronx, 13 Stories, acclaimed author and Bronx-born Jerome Charon returns to his roots to rediscover the borough where he says the big shots came from and want to forget. Here to talk about why it was so difficult to make the journey back home and these marvelous stories is my good friend Jerome Charon. Jerome, always good to see you. Thank you, Jack. I want to start with the title, right? Right. Um, Bitter Bronx. Why bitter? Well, you just defined it in your... Yeah. In, in your little description, I, I see it as a place where there was no language, where there was no possibility of acquiring language. And I'm a writer, and a writer without language in a world where there was no language made it very, very bitter for me. When you say no language, what do you mean by that? Well, for example, I didn't know that the New York Times existed until I moved out of the Bronx. There were no newsstands, there were no libraries. There was, there was no culture, there was no possibility of learning anything. And for me, the real poverty is the poverty of language. When you talk about that, and this is, as I said, it's just a, it's a marvelous collection of 13 stories by you. Uh, this is on the heels of, of a, a book which I loved, I Am Abraham, right. that you did, uh, a, a, a just fascinating look at, at Abraham Lincoln. Um, and, and you decided to take a very hard look here. And I, the very first line in the book is, for a long time, I couldn't go back to the Bronx. Why not, and then why did you decide to go back? Well, I, you know, it was a place of great sadness. It was a place where, uh, you know, you really couldn't thrive, couldn't survive. And then when I was about 50 years old, while the Bronx, you know, was, you know, in, in horrific shape, a BBC crew decided to visit the Bronx thinking it was like East Berlin, you know. So when I went there, I discovered, when I looked at the streets, that, you know, in the empty spaces of my life, I mean, there was a kind of imagination, and I grew out of that imagination, so that not only was it a place where I wanted to go, it was like a fix, it was like a shot. I needed to go back there, I needed to feel the roots, you know, where I grew up. I want to talk about a couple of these stories, just to give people a sense of them. Right. But one of the things that I found fascinating here, and this is, I saw this in many of the reviews, the wonderful reviews of, right. of the book, it said that the, the, the sort of the unspoken character who is woven throughout right. all of this, in many ways as a villain, is Robert Moses. Yes. You know, we think Robert Moses in New York City is, is, is thought of the great builder. But He's the great destroyer. Yeah, why do you say that? Well, look, he built a highway right through the middle of the borough. You know, when I was a kid, we didn't speak of the South Bronx. We spoke of the East Bronx and the West Bronx. Now, if you look at the Grand Concourse, you have these Art De Deco buildings that are extraordinary. They're almost like a museum. Well, he just crossed the borough, destroyed lower middle class neighborhoods, and the South Bronx from that point on Never survived. Let's talk about some of the stories. All right. Um, one is one. One is called D. Right. And it's about a, a a fascinating story about a woman who is who is is sort of driven by photography. Give me a give me a little sort of headline for what that story is about. Well, it actually when when, when I this, the story is about Diane Arbus, even though I never mention her name, but she did one photograph called the Jewish Giant in the East Bronx. It's a photograph of this Eddie, Eddie Carmel standing there with his parents looking up at him in total bewilderment. And I saw myself as Eddie Carmel because my parents just didn't understand what my world was about. And I was this lumbering giant trying to go somewhere with no place to go. So that photograph was very poignant to me, and I wanted to do a story about how she took that photograph. The conversations that you've created amongst right. the two of them are, are marvelous. I saw a reviewer talking about the, the book and the stories and saying that they are both a, a, a celebration by yes. you of the area and also a mourning yes. of you by the area. Is, is that accurate? I think it is. I, I think the celebration is in the language. 
the morning is in the texture. And it all started one day, Jack, because I was going through uh, the Grand Concourse and I saw this sign. I had never seen a sign like that before. It said, same day occupancy. You could move, you could literally walk into the building and move in. And I thought of having another life. What if I got out of the car, went into that building got, and got an apartment? And that's how these stories began. Well, the, once again, it's called Bitter Bronx, 13 Stories, just a marvelous collection by, by one of our great writers. Jerome, Thank always you good so to much. See you. Thank you for spending Thank some you. time with us. And for all of you Bronxites, if that's the right word, and New Yorkers out there, share some of your own memories from the Bronx. You can comment on our Facebook page. You can tweet us and visit our website at metrofocus.org. Thank you.